this episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. My name is Brian Johnson, and I'm from uh, DKJ Productions. Uh, we've been around since uh, 1991. Uh, uh, currently, we're running about 50 different websites, and most of them are WordPress at this point. And uh, we've written a few plugins, but we haven't published any yet. I've been really interested in, in you know, learning more about plugins, so I hope tonight will be a good chance to show some of the table on my life. Thanks very much for putting up your favorite plugins there. If you can, take a moment and add a few more if you've got some up there. Uh, so, some of my favorite plugins, or at least a few of them, I can't, I should probably go off online about this. Uh, uh, first off, we'll look at some stats. Um, you can go over to this uh, website called Hacker Target that uh, tells you about uh, different plugins and um, different WordPress installations. And they have an interesting uh, statistic of the different uh, of half a million websites. These are the ones that people are using out there in the field as opposed to ones you might see when you go into the plugin at WordPress.org. You'll see how many downloads there are. This is actually in practice. So contact form 7 seems to be the most prevalent. Called the Ghost Jetpack. Um, uh, uh, HackerTarget.com. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of Contact Form 7 Ghost. Um, the W3 total catch could probably be something that uh, you could do a whole night on, or I think there's been some other uh, presentations in the past about caching and so forth. So, the general overview is I'll show you how to find some favorites. Uh, I'm going to go over Contact Form 7 and Siblings and Yoast, and some plugins that are good for helping the user that might help, like Jenny's problem with the, uh, the users who do all kinds of crazy things where you have to train them. Uh, um, there's a lot of things that WordPress itself will provide for you if you can hook into it with some plugins. And then dealing with graphics, because I've found all clients just do not get graphics. And that's one of the biggest points of failure. <clears throat> so how to find favorites? Um, first off, if there's anyone in the room who is, has not signed up with WordPress.org, doesn't have an account, just leave the room now. You should go out and get an account at WordPress.org. Because then you can make comments on uh, plugins, you can review plugins, you can ask questions and provide answers to help the community grow. So go out there and get your sign up. Um, when you log in, you can um, um, just you know, set up a username and so forth. The nice thing you get is a, um, uh, a little, my favorites up there in the top right corner. Uh, I didn't notice this myself until a few months ago. Holy cow, what's that? So I'll go over there and look, and um, there's my um, uh, mugshot there, and below it, there's my favorites. So um, uh, I, I've gone along and I've gone to the different uh, plugins, and just hit the little uh, favorite icon and they, they show up over here. So whenever you look at a plugin at the WordPress.org, over in the right corner, you'll see a little favorite part there. So you just click that and it's favorited. And then you've got access to it. The, the cool thing is when you go to install a plugin, um, it'll show up there in your um, install dialog. So that's a great way to um, save yourself the trip of like manually uploading stuff or repeatedly going up and looking up plugins. So you just uh, log in again there. One thing to remember is that this list of favorites is there for public to everyone else. So if you have some right wing um, conspiracy theory type plugins or uh, lots of local government, do not choose those kind of plugins. Hopefully they're not up. Um, let's see, in the, uh, uh, when you're looking at your list within the dashboard, then it shows you the uh, ones you've installed and the ones you haven't installed. So you, you go, it's a good way to keep track of what ones, because you, you might not use all the same plugins for all your clients. Um, so our example there was Contact Form 7, so here's a little bit about it and its friends. Um, I, I think that um, I sort of view Contact Form 7 as a set of three, because you really need a capture to go with it, and then there's a nice database you can hook up to it to provide um, uh, easy to download stats for your, your clients. 
a lot of people use gravity forms. I haven't had any experience with it. Um, I've used a couple other uh, contact forms. And this one, I think, is the easiest one to configure. It just gives you a basic contact form to start out with. But you can customize it um, in, in a little dialog here. Um, you can add um, a capture here, and you can choose the size of the capture you want. And if it's uh, small, medium, or large. Um, and you can get things ID so that um, you can also change your markup over there on the left. Um, you, know, uh, you can add ID so you can change the styling in your style sheet later. So here's an example of um, the Prove Your Human. I put that little bit of text in so I'm able to you know, customize my uh, CAPTCHA la label there, whereas some plugins don't seem to let you do that. Um, there's a, another screenshot showing um, kind of the markup. You can see that um, the, the styles that applied over there in the dashboard are, are indeed showing up in the markup in the HTML. Um, you can get pretty fancy with it. Here's a very complex form that um, um, had to do with the client. I was able to set this up pretty easily in WordPress with um, minimal effort, um, giving some different styles to the error messages and so forth. Um, the, another thing it has is uh, additional headers. So when you, when you send an email out from Contact Form 7, um, you can also BCC it to a certain address. Um, you can um, also, um, it's an AJAX based contact form, so there's not really a response page. It gives a sense AJAX message, so that's hard to detect from Google. So you can actually use a tracking code. Uh, when the form AJAX request comes back, you get an on set OK message that then you can pass along to JavaScript and then um, let Google capture that so you can track events and so forth. Um, you can also export um, the database. You can export your um, uh, results in a variety of formats. And it's somehow or another magic that keeps track of all the contact forms you've got in there. Um, it also um, works with a variety of other uh, plugins uh, Contact Form 7, Test Secure, Contact Form, Jetpack, and um, I think Gravity Forms too. Um, I haven't tried it with those other ones, but it's something certainly worth well to do. There's a lot of settings here. I'm going to go quickly through a couple of those things. Um, now I get to Yoast SEO. Uh, for a long time, I was using all in one SEO, and I, um, I like that one a lot, and then I discovered the Yoast um, plugin, and it seemed to do a lot more um, stuff. Probably everyone's already used this, but I've, I've found a couple things that weren't quite obvious to me. When you install Yoast, it's going to ask you to allow tracking, and I usually don't do that just because I have a suspicion. It might be slowing down the website. I don't know if it's really true or not, but I just don't want to be tracked by, by Yoast or anyone. Um, there, there is a nag message there in red, in you know, a red background, so that's got to be important to figure. So I just I've got to take that. Do whatever it says there. Um, when you um, get over to the uh, another one settings, you can uh, decide to disable the author um, uh, user. I'm sorry, the, um, the author user site now. And I think that's probably a good idea because unless you're running a blog where you want to expose the list of authors, you might not want to tell the hackers, "Hey, there's an author of this email address or this name or so forth." So you could uh, dispense with providing an XML comment for them. Um, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and ping Yahoo and ask. And um, you can exclude some post types from your XML feed. Um, like in this case, we have some fish that we don't want people to see. They'll still exist as that type of content you can see on the website. But there's no actual XML feed for it. Um, it also allows you to import um, your settings, if you've been using all of it on SEO or some other plugin, it'll happily suck those things in for you. Um, and you can have it then delete the old data, which is a good idea. But if you do this, just back up your database just to play safe, because you never know, it's, it's good, good go away. Um, but I, that's one feature I liked was I had, you know, maybe 10 sites I needed to port over videos, so it was really easy to do. Um, when you go to the page editor, um, way down at the bottom of the Yoast SEO plugin, on the um, advanced tab, 
there's this nice little 301 redirect field that um, you can use if you want to redirect your page to somewhere else. And so that actually saved me having another plugin because I've been using the redirect plugin to do that. So it's nice. That's one of the other reasons I adopted this for that feature alone. Uh, now I've got a few plugins that are good for helping the user. Um, white label CMS um, would probably be a really good idea for um, someone that um, is trying to train a bunch of people. Uh, you can first off customize your dashboard so you can basically logo up there. Um, that, that makes it a lot more approachable and identifiable. Um, you can customize the little icons you see in the top left corner. We've got the, the 2-2 logo for 22 Liberty. And then we have some nice bright cherry red squares that I hope to God they will see and click this time. Um, sometimes you give instructions to your clients and they don't see the, um, you know, they don't get the message. So if you can make it really attractive, you know, more likely to click on this one here. Um, see, the, there's four basic panels within the way that we see in us. Um, the branding and dashboard are the ones that you generally mess around with. Uh, you can also customize your footer, you see down at the bottom, designed by Adams Design, put by BPJ Productions. So I'm able to kind of give my users a way to contact me if they need some help. Um, there's um, the admin bar, um, sorry, no, the, the dashboard logo um, is really easy to add. Uh, it's, you store this image in your themes folder, inside the themes images folder. So in my case, I'm using a smartphone subfolder of that because I've got some other icons that I keep there. So that way, it sort of makes it really easy to set up a website if you have a generic theme that you just dump a bunch of logos in. Um, on the dashboard panels, uh, uh, you can decide to hide some of the ones that you might not find useful to you. Some of the feeds and so forth, I don't think they're that useful to the end user. And, um, then here's where you can do your own welcome panel setting. So you can see I've got some HTML code that shows the three cherry red buttons there. Um, during development, I find I want to have um, my clients look at the website without anyone else being able to see it. So I use the registered users only plugin um, that will uh, just basically make someone log in in order to see the website. You could also use this if you're going to have a private blog or something like that. Uh, your family or, or, or an organization. Everyone would have to log in in order to see it. Peter's login redirect is similar to that. Um, if you are having your client log in to your website, you might not want them to go straight to the dashboard. So with this, you can say, all right, I'll redirect them over to maybe the, the home page where I want them to look at something, or you can send them over to the post page, that's where they're supposed to start creating posts. You can also have a, a logout URL so that they log out. And you can have a little URL that would pop up when they log out successfully. Um, see, there's a uh, bunch of other settings on there you can mess around with um, to, to specify based on the type of user or the user name, um, you know, different things like that. So it's very handy. Um, Having used Yoast, know, sometimes I end up with um, these uh, page lists that look like this. It's pure hell. There's like, you know, all these SEO fields that I don't know why you put them in there, but they're kind of crammed over there and making my uh, my page and post view that's really hard to to um, see. But, you know, I just really want to get rid of those things there. And people say, well, you know, don't be such a baby. Just go up to the, the screen options. And, Click all those little things, but I don't have time to do that. And I have to do this for every user in my blog, which is just insane. So, um, with the, um, you could uh, instead have, uh, you know, something that you want to look like this more readily than using the admin um, columns plugin. So it basically shows you a list of all of your your possible columns there that are going to be showing here, and you can just turn them on or off. You can even rearrange them. If you don't want to have the thumbnail show up first, you can put them last. So that's very handy. And it also lets you put in um, custom fields. 
Uh, uh, here, actually, we're removing the SEO uh, field there. Uh, but you could add a custom field. So let's say you have a notes field that you put under your, um, your post. That notes field could be sort of internal documentation. So it might be you know, instructions to your user about um, ways to add this post later or special properties or things like that. So that would actually show up in the, uh, your list of pages as well when you go back to the list view. And it's really cool with the media library, um, you can add some of the missing fields I think WordPress should have built in, like the width by height. Why not have a column that shows your images width by height and the file size of the images? Because that's um, back to my point about graphics are really hard for users, is they're always uploading six gigabyte images, like why? If you, so if you can help them see, oh, there's, you know, I've got five, six gigabyte images in my media library, that, that's good information for them. So now the media library can become really useful to show you the sizes there. Um, sometimes you might have a site with a lot of um, pages. So um, this uh, plugin called Pages Children from Code Hooligans has a, uh, a way of um, changing how pages look. So if you look at this layout, we've got um, the home page, uh, the, the upper level, 22 liberty sink level. Then we have sub pages of the, uh, the, the building, shimmering glass, and renderings, and so forth. Um, you can see the, I've got 68 pages. So you can imagine you have to like, scroll forever through this page list. So what the pages children does is it collapses all the parent pages all the children up into the parent pages. So um, when we get um, wait for something wide here. You said we have a problem. Um, it's uh, supposed to be showing up. There we go. Uh, so there's the, uh, the children that we've co collapsed. Um, now we can see my parent pages are Home, 22 liberty and here location of video views. So you can actually see that maybe the video parent page has no children. Um, and then when you click on the children or view sub pages links, then you can see um, now we're looking at all those child pages. The tricky part that we found when using it with um, our uh, editor was that uh, it wasn't quite obvious how to get back to the parent pages. So there's the, the, the red arrow that's showing you where the, uh, the parent pages are so you can get back to them. Or you could just uh, turn on the, the parent column and show um, you know, that these are all the ones that belong to that, that parent. Um, and this, does anyone know what kind of box this is? Anyone? Nope, it's a meadow box. Speaking of metaboxes, right. metaboxes are those little boxes you have in your, your layout. <laughs> That's all this would go up. It's supposed to be WordPress users. Metabox, come on. Um, uh, you can add this upload metabox to your, um, your layout with this uh, SP uploader. Um, we found that um, the, um, for some of our users, it was just too hard to upload images. Even though we have that cute little add media icon up there in the upper left. No one quite gets it. Uh, maybe it's the music symbol or something throws it off. Or we found that people were going over to the other music symbol that's in the sidebar and going straight into the media library and uploading images there. So then we had all these orphaned pictures, but it was just really difficult to track down. So instead, we've got, you now if you notice in the upper right corner, we have a, um, a browse button there surrounded by a meta box that says image for updates page. So for this client, uh, they just have to go over to there, click browse select a picture and they upload it to that area. With the, within the configuration of this plugin, you can um, set up as many of these um, uploaded meta boxes as you, as you want. Uh, so we've just got one. You can change the label you want to have for it here. So it gives you a little bit of customization to make it easier for the user. Uh, so here's an example of a successfully uploaded um, image there, um, which then creates a possible other point of confusion for the user because then they might be thinking that's the featured image. So you could actually probably toss another plugin and it would set the first image to be the featured image. Um, you could look up, I, I, 
I don't have any guides guides for you on the featured image um, plugin, but you, there's there's something you can use that will force the first image to become a featured image. So that's another way to sort of help the user. Let's see, for graphics help, uh, just have three here. Um, the enable media replace, um, which is um, meant to help you save some time. Um, every image you can, of course, put a caption, an alt tag, title, and other useful metadata. But then what happens if they change the picture? Then you've got to upload that image again, a new image. And you've got to retype all those, those alt tags and so forth. Well, this lets you just simply replace the image with a, um, a different image. So you, there in your media library, you'll have a nice little link there next to each image that says replace media. So you click that, and um, then you can choose another file. And it can be the same main file or different. And you have a couple of options. You can say, well, replace this file. No matter what I give you, if it's called fish.jpg, go ahead and upload it. It will always be fish.jpg or have it go through and find all the occurrences and update that image. Meanwhile, keeping all the metadata intact. And I had one website where I had about 600 images, so this was a serious liability for us if we lost the metadata for those images. So um, there's you know, some of the, the critical fields to look at there, choices you can make anytime you want to play. Um, regenerate thumbnails is a um, similar kind of helpful graphic tool. Um, it's from uh, Microbond, uh, Microbello Sembond. He actually recommends the Jetpack Photon uh, module, which I haven't used, but um, I, I, I think um, I generally kind of stay with the Jetpack because so it sort of you know, fills up. I, I really haven't used it that much. Um, I, I have so many other things that would work for me. Uh, but since he says well, you know, it still works, why not use it? Um, that way I don't have to worry about Jetpack. So this will actually go through, let's say you change your, your um, image sizes in the media settings area. You used to have 72 pixel square thumbnails and now you want them to be proportional to 144 pixel images or something. So you could just use this tool to regenerate all the thumbnails at once and be done with it. Uh, you can also regenerate a sing single thumbnail for some reason. Um, uh, sometimes you can change your images with the approved yet effective WordPress editor. There's a way you can crop images in WordPress, so you might have messed one of those up, so this would give you a chance to go and fix that uh, back to its original if you needed to. Um, it'll give you a little progress report of what it's doing and if there's any failures. Um, then the image size, I think, is really important for those six gigabyte images that the client wants to upload. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, it has several different options here. That, the settings. I think this comes shows us up under the media settings tab, and uh, you've got three choices of how you can um, resize images. So if the client uploads a really huge image, you can say, well, no, no, make it, um, you know, a certain file size, uh, change it to a certain image quality, and if they upload a PNG, turn that into a JPEG. I had a situation where, where a client was doing screenshots on the Mac and she had all these great PNGs that were just huge. So we turned them into um, JPEGs for sure. Um, media tags is another thing I, I really found very useful. I was doing a website for an art gallery. Um, it lets you give tags to images. Uh, you could say, well, I'm going to give each image a separate post and then every post has a certain tag and view your collections that way. But this way we can directly attach the um, tags to those images. Um, it adds a, um, a media tags column to your media library. And then those, those tags themselves become clickable. So in the media library, I've clicked on Exhibit 30, and now I'm seeing all the Exhibit 30 tag images. So that's very useful too. You could do a lot of archiving or, you know, Find the images of certain tags quite easily. Let's see, for um, this shows you what it adds to the um, image editor down at the bottom of the page. It'll show you all the tags there, and there's a field where you can add new tags, just like you can posts. 
So here's um, how it's being used in practice. Uh, if you notice the URL of this page is media-tags slash encaustic. So th this is all the encaustic style um, artwork that's showing up. So it kind of naturally flows into the whole URL pattern of WordPress. Here we are looking at um, how the uh, media tags show up in your insert media dialog. They have to kind of cram it in there in the sidebar. Uh, there's just not much room in that whole dialog box. So if you scroll down a little bit further, you can see there's where the media tags show up. And then they have um, yet another place on the left-hand side that you can uh, go and see all the different um, media tags you put there, put numbers of the, of the count of how many items are in that particular category. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, my basic advice is back up your database uh, before you do any of these plugins. Use trusted plugins. Like uh, these, I'm really sure about. Um, you you should probably look very carefully at plugins that um, are all that anywhere, even if you just sort of read the reviews, make sure they're compatible for you, uh, that there are any conflicts and so forth. And if there's a, um, sometimes you might want to think carefully before updating a plugin because you might lose some features. I've noticed an increasing number of plugins that have kind of gone commercial have lost some features like the um, uh, better WordPress security when it uh, came I theme security just suddenly lost two or three functions I thought were really very useful. They want you to move to the paid version. So maybe, you know, look at some of those ones. And it's, it's not bad to pay for them, too. I mean, that's um, another thing is uh, to donate to the, the people who are putting the plugins out there. Uh, one time I needed a little patch made to, I think it was the Posty plugin, which is sort of a log by email plugin. And I just sent the guy a couple hundred bucks and he fixed the thing. It would take me, like, you know, five years to figure it out. And he probably did, you know, two hours. So, you know, it, it made the thing better and it got me my product done on time for my client. If you run into conflicts with your plugins, um, do screenshots of your plugins um, listing, I think, first, before you start adding plugins. And then if the conflict, just turn them all on off and turn it back on at a time. And um, here's some other plugins of interest that you might um, you know, think about. Or you know, we've, we've got a bunch of them up here on the um, Board, so if you want to add some more, that's a good idea. And I'll put this stuff up on my website, which is uh, ekj.info. I've got some business cards up there if you need to get a hold of me. I'd love to hear you know, if people have some other ideas. So if I'm not the total world's expert or any sort of expert on plugins, so if you've got something you think that is totally wrong that I've gotten here, um, you know, let me know. I'd be glad to you know, come up with something you know, to follow up and improve my practice. And that's pretty much it. There's questions? I'm always struggling with uh, uh, getting a, the images in a post where I want the images and then wrapping the text nicely around it. Is there a plug-in that makes that easier? You, you need an image. You need, so you've inserted an image in the post and you want to be able to control how the text wraps better? But, but, uh, both where the... My, uh, Whatever it is I'm using, I'm, it's not very friendly. Yeah. And I can put it, the image on the left, the middle, or the right. And I, I must say I haven't seen anything that will do that. And I've always viewed it as that's just symptomatic of word processing in general. That you can, you can, you have to remember this is not a layout program. It's more of a continuous flow of, of text and pictures. And so you kind of have to put your pictures in and Oh, we float left or right or you know, block. I mean, it's kind of your options. Right. I just wanted to see if there was like, uh, I'm an artist, so I have a, a website and I'm trying to figure out a way to be able to basically use my iPhone in some type of mosaic so that when I take a picture, send it to my site. It contributes to the mosaic. Oh, that, that'd be kind of, I don't know if there's a, well, there's a plug that'll handle the, the sending and receiving of the picture. It's called Posty. 
of POSTIE. And it's really pretty cool. It'll, um, you, if you want to send pictures to your blog, um, you, give, you set up a secret email address and password and so forth. And you just email your picture from your phone or whatever to that. And then Posty can handle saving that image for you. Okay. Where you, you probably need something else in your theme that's going to then collect all those images to, to do the mosaic part. And that probably gets into more, you know, complex programming that would be very visual in nature. You know? I, don't, I don't know if anyone knows any sort of optical, almost OCR type things like OCR image, where optical color recognition would be what probably should be looking for those images like that. Google Analytics. Um, yeah, um, I was talking with someone earlier about that. Um, uh, you can you can add Google Analytics to your dashboard. Does a plugin will do that? But really, I would recommend not doing that because you're going to be slowing down your dashboard a little bit every time you go to the that page list. If you want to see like how many hits are on that page, that's kind of convenient on one level. But if you want to you know, then get in and make changes to those pages, you know, you've kind of got this overhead, all this Google stuff happening. And you might better be better off just letting Google does, do what it does best over there. Anything else? Anyone?